it is always an honor to bring you this beautiful show. This is a family show. If you are new on our channel, we are bringing you the best family show tackling different family issues. And if today you are having a teenager at home, a youth, I tell you the show today is yours. Thank you for always tuning in and before I continue, allow me to introduce my wonderful husband, Mr. Salano here. Before he, he introduces our parents, beautiful mom and dad, Pastor Sum Nene and Reverend Mnene. Thank you very much. We want to thank God for again another day that we want to talk about family issues affecting our family, our children, our teenagers and all round in marriage setup. Let me welcome our parents. The Tua Tua couple, just to say hi before we continue. Hi, great viewers. You better stay tuned. Today's topic, we want to talk to the youth, to the teenagers. You are there. Please, if you are a parent and you know any teenager, any youth, call them. They need to hear this because it's going to help them now and in the days to come. I'm not alone. I came with my sweetheart, Sue Monene. Over. <laughs> wow, thank you very much for tuning in and I trust that this show is going to answer a few questions that probably you have been asking yourself as a mother or a father, how you going to bring up your, your daughter and your son emotionally, psychologically and spiritually whole and we are here to share some nuggets and wisdom and I trust that your heart will be open to receive this wisdom with meekness and gladness in your heart. Thank you very much. Now, I have a very disturbing question here from a disturbed parent mm -hmm. and I just thought that maybe we could share it out then we see how we can help other parents who are having the same issue. Mm -hmm. So he says that, uh, hello guys, I'm a parent of two children. One is a teenager, another one is a youth. Mm -hmm. They have become a headache in my family. Mm -hmm. Right now, I suspect they are engaged in drugs mm -hmm in drinking and in sex. I cannot punish them because they even want to fight me back. Mm -hmm. They live sometimes on they live sometimes on Fridays mm -hmm. and come back on Mondays. When I question them, they get very hard on me. I'm now losing it. What should I do? Uh, I, I want to say that uh, parenting is very challenging. Mm -hmm. Because as we have always said, there is no script, there is no manual on how you can parent your children. Sure. But I want to say that uh, for that parent, I know you are disturbed because of how your daughter, your son could be behaving. But I want to tell you there is hope. Don't give up. Even when they become so stubborn, rude, rebellious, it is good for you to remain resilient because it is through your, your love and your concern and your care that you are able to win them up. Mm -hmm. I want to say one of the things that makes our children so much become, you know, sexually active, get involved into drinking and in drugs is because they are in bad company. Mm -hmm. As the word of God says in the book of 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33, that bad company corrupts good morals. Mm -hmm. And so you need to understand that uh, probably they have not learned from you or they saw you doing it because they are parents who drink, mm -hmm. they are parents who have all these things. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask yourself, first of all, you need to ask yourself as a parent, could you be the person who has contributed to this because of your lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Because if I'm bringing up children and they see me sometimes drunk, they see me sometimes with other men, mm -hmm. they see me coming late, it might be difficult for them to correct my sons and my daughters because I set the pace. Mm -hmm. And so if that is not, if that, if for you, you have lived a good life, you have tried you, uh, everything humanly possible to to make sure that you give the best example to your children then it means that your children could be in bad company mm -hmm. and so if i were you i would identify who are the friends to my daughters mm -hmm. who are the friends to my sons mm -hmm. and it, when i identify them i can be able to know uh what exactly what, you know even i'll not get information from them i'll get them from the friends if they are if i'm able to reach them out mm -hmm. because you you for them to be able to stop this thing you have to you can't just deal with your children Children. You have to go an extra mile and get to know the other group or the other the other friends that are you in your daughter because in your daughter or in your son because when they are together it's like they give each other strength. Yo mioto, you know, kuski. I have someone whom we can drink with, we can chat with, we can go for bash with. So that's very very important. So you need to identify who are the friends of your 
for of your daughter of your son is it possible even to reach out to the parents so that as parents i and together with the other parents whom their children are also wayward we can be able to look on a, on a way how we can be able to get our children back to their normal state so uh, you can combine efforts as parents and get to know how can you help them and how to help them is not you remember we said when we, we talked in the previous episodes that when a child is from 13 years to childhood the parents are not the hero you are not now the the role model they wanna they wanna you know check on their their peers they want to check on the internet they want to see copy what other people are doing so the best person for this time would be a mediator. You need a mediator. Mm -hmm. Someone who can stand in between you, the parents, and the children, and bring the same sense of the same words that you have been talking to your daughter and your son. Mm -hmm. And they're able to see it from another dimension. Mm -hmm. So I would say that uh, you need, we need to seek help. You need to seek help. And please don't allow these things to depress you and to get out of hand and you feel like you are helpless. Get someone who can be able to help you. And even if you reach us, we are able to connect you with best counselors, whether they are men or women, who can be able to help your daughter and your son and i trust that the number is is is, is on that on the on the show for you to be able to get help mm -hmm. alternatively what i tend to think is at that stage mm -hmm. you are not supposed to be harsh as mm -hmm. a mother mm -hmm. or as a father no mm -hmm. it is a time to discuss to negotiate mm -hmm. you get the point eh? yeah. and and uh, allow them to to be a yeah, dialogue you know ask them what could be contributing this yeah. could they be because of uh, what Berry said the other day mommy issue or daddy issues so we need to identify what is the root cause what could be causing all these things because most of the times when you see the teenagers drinking when you see them you know partying and all these things they are trying to cover up for something that emotionally they feel they are hurting mm -hmm. but they don't want to face the reality mm -hmm. because they don't know who is that person they can be able to share and they are able to help them get out of this situation yeah, mm -hmm. maybe just to add to what mom is saying yes yeah. the fact that you've identified it as a problem yes. is a good place to start with mm -hmm. because yeah. any problem as long as you identify this is a problem mm -hmm. you'll always get a way out very true there was a, a book i was reading about a stubborn teenager mm -hmm. he would wake up and the mom would tell them please make your bed this boy would not make the bed mm -hmm. please always tidy up your room the boy would always be going and leaving this mm -hmm. so mom will always be agitated agitated so she resolved from always talking and having tantrums she resolved to be making the bed herself and putting some breadcrumbs <laughs> <laughs> wow the yeah the mother right. and the boy would complain he would get to the room and the boy would be like wow mommy my room is made thank you and he would be sleeping on the bed happily mm -hmm. only later on to realize that breadcrumbs all over mm -hmm. so he would complain mommy why are you always putting breadcrumbs after doing the bed so nicely and mom would tell tell the boy that i'm sorry son the only way i can make your bed is by you allowing breadcrumbs on the bed every time i make it so you either make it yourself or you will be enduring the breadcrumbs because i eat bread every time i'm making your bed <laughs> so if you want the bed to be made nicely maybe you can do it yourself the mom would keep doing that until the boy said, oh, Mom, no, ja, let me just be making my bed. Mm -hmm. So there are many approaches to situation, as Mama Wonderful. said. Mm -hmm. It's not how you tackle it. You say, you tell them, I'll report it to your grandparents or something. Create a safe space to start with because mm -hmm. I've ever been a teenager. Wow. Yeah, I was so much opinion, opinionated. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't rebellious. I mm -hmm. was just somebody who would sometimes speak my mind. So create a safe space. Tell them, Kababa, Onkama, what is happening? You know you are a child of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is if you ever created the foundation because the Bible tells us mm -hmm. train a child the way they should go and they will never depart from mm -hmm. it. Most of the issues arise from loneliness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the kid, the kid is lonely. And I don't. They have, they have always been only with the auntie, Yule mm -hmm. Mama Fuwa and aunties. So they resolve to. Uh, they, they, they escape. That mm. is a, a coping mechanism yeah. in most cases. Yeah. Wow. So if you missed that place, create a safe space, have a conversation that is not judgmental, mm -hmm. just like mom is saying, mm -hmm. and the kid will, over time, hata kama kuru daje, positive attracts mm -hmm. and it will overcome the negativity. 
I will say that uh, I'm really agreeing with you what you are mm. saying. Yes. yes. And I will say that what this parent is experiencing is not the problem but the symptoms. Mm. Yes. And we, um, as Mama has said, we have to go to the root cause. Yeah. Where is this thing coming from? Mm. So maybe is it were you absent? Mm. Or why you you did not lay good foundation in them? Mm. So I can say me for example, I, I was raised by a father who was a drunkard and always smoking. Mm -hmm. But I never saw my father smoking. Mm. But I always just we could just feel that the, the smoke or the, the cigarette order mm. Najua metoko kuvuta kitu. Mm. But we never saw him smoking even one day. So one day he called and told us that cigarette is very very bad. Mm. When you are still very young, yeah. and this thing can kill you. Oh, no, no. He, uh, he showed this clue on a chimney mm. uh, after in our show, Lafu and Afuniko and a glass and Danny. Mm -hmm. So, after my cousin, this is very black. And I said, If you drink, if you smoke this thing, your stomach could be this black. So, you see, so we began feeling. Then he said, No one should ever send you to the shop to buy cigarette and you go. Mm -hmm. If I ever find you mutu and akutuma could go and buy a cigarette, then you mm -hmm. go, I'll cut off your hands. Mm -hmm. So you were so much afraid of that. Yeah. So one day, uh, an uncle of his, my father's uncle, who is like a grandfather to me, came to visit. And they were almost age mates and he called me, come here! He was very harsh. Mm -hmm. Kujapa, unetwa nani? Talk like a man! So I was very shaking and then told me, I want to go to the shop and buy me cigarette. Okay? Nimesema nini? And you know my father is there and he's also there. Then he told me, go and buy a cigarette called Rosta. Say what? Say Rosta. Rosta. So if you come here with anything else, I'm going to kill you. So I'm here now. I can't take money from him. And also I can't refuse him to send me because we he's should be. Very he's authoritative. very authoritative. He's very harsh on us. Wow. And my father is also there. My father is looking at me now. Yes, this is now the chance. <laughs> I told him never to go to the shop when he had been sent. So I was like, now, do I take, do I not? And what? I'm like, what's happening? My father said, now my father said, Akasema now, uh, let's go. I want to talk to my mother. We can go as we buy, pass by the shop. So that one saved me. So that thing made me to have a very negative uh, perception about a cigarette. Wow. And also smoking, or also drinking. My father used to come home uh, smoking, drinking, but uh, drunk. Mm. But we never saw him drinking. So we have our parents who, who send their children to go and buy cigarettes. Niende cigara kwa duka. So child takes us a very normal thing. Yes. Yes. Also, there are those who come home with alcohol. They drink from home. Mm -hmm. The children, they sit drinking, they say it's a normal thing. Yeah. So, so when, you are saying that your children should not inherit your struggles. Yes. Okay. So what I'm saying is that mm -hmm. You should not teach them things you wish them not to do. So wow. as mom asked first, could you be the source of these issues? Yes. Could you have been contributing one way or the other? Indirectly. Then yeah, uh, maybe what, did you play a role in helping them to know that drinking is bad? Um, sometimes you find that uh, people will do things because they don't understand mm -hmm. the reason behind what they are, you know, doing what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of uh, assumption mm. that um, they know, yet they don't know. Yeah. And the word of God says very clearly that my people are destroyed mm. for lack of knowledge. knowledge. You see, when God created sex, mm. and we call it tua tua, mm. um, <laughs> tua tua, yes, He never created that for children. Mm -hmm. In fact, you should be able to teach your children, mm -hmm. uh, teenagers, the youth, whatever they are, that uh, sex is not meant for children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sex is not meant for teenagers. Mm -hmm. Sex is not meant for, for the students. Mm -hmm. It's not meant for the college students neither. Mm -hmm. Sex is not even for the youth. Sex is not for the working class. <laughs> and adults. <laughs> and adults. Mm -hmm. You see, we tend to feel mm. that if I'm working, then I qualify for sex. sex. Mm. If I'm in the campus, I'm out of my, I'm, I'm, I'm <coughs> learning my life. Mm -hmm. It's not meant for all those mm. people I've mentioned. Mm. Very true. Mm. Sex is meant for only two groups of people. Mm -hmm. And listen to me, which are they? Number one, sex is meant for the married. Mm. So are you married? No. Number two, sex is meant for the parents. 
Are you a parent? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right? Yes. So when you understand what you are doing, you are doing the wrong thing, mm. then there are consequences mm. towards what yes. you are doing. Mm. And there is something that uh, uh, my wife would want you to, 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 to remind us, mm. Mm. an advice that a great woman mm. gave to the son in Proverbs chapter 31. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Pastor Monene, for yeah. that. Mm. Uh, the word of God is very clear. If you read the book of Proverbs 31 from verse 1 to 9, mm. you're going to see a king called Lemuel mm. and the mother. Yeah. I, I don't know why the Bible does not mention the father, but you know, most of the nurturing is more to the women. Maybe the father had gone to work that day. Mm. And so this king is now a king, but he remembers what the mother told him when he was a very young person, when he was a teenager. And he tells him that you are my, if you read it in Good News Bible, it comes out very well. If you read with other version, you might not get the content as it's supposed to come out so clearly. The Good News Bible is the one that talks about that you are my son, Lemuel, you know, a son that... Uh, I longed to see. And he tells the son that do not spend mm -hmm. your energy on sex wow. and do not spend your energy on women. women. Uh -huh. And then he tells him, do not drink wine uh -huh. or have a craving for alcohol. Yeah. Because alcohol is for those who are wow. dying. <laughs> you know, it's very clear. Yeah. And I think that's where to begin off. Mm -hmm. That the reason why we should not, you, you, my son, my daughter, mm -hmm. you should not take beer, you should not have sex. Mm -hmm. It is not because of me as your mother and your father. Mm -hmm. It is because of the person who gave you the sex organs. Mm -hmm. The person who gave you your mouth. Mm -hmm. You get that. When children understand that apart from the authority of their parents, they have a higher authority of a deity yeah. who is called God. Mm -hmm. So when these children have that fear that there is a, a supernatural God mm -hmm. to live according to his will and his purpose. He has said that we should use our sex organ, your vagina and your penis. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to have sex when you are married. Mm -hmm. Your mouth is not supposed to drink. The Bible talks about it. There are so many verses in the Bible that are against the drinking. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of them I can remember is in Ephesians 5 verse 18. Mm -hmm. If you read with HGB, HCB version. It mm -hmm. says that do not be drunk with wine, mm -hmm. which leads to reckless actions, mm -hmm. but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. wow. So anytime you drink, it will lead your actions, it will lead your mind mm -hmm. to doing reckless action mm -hmm. and reckless talk. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So when children understand mm -hmm. that the, 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 they, are the custodian or they, are, they are the custodian of their vagina and their penis, mm -hmm. and they are answerable to God, how they mm -hmm. use their vagina, then they will, not, they will go beyond mm -hmm. fearing their mother and father. Mm -hmm. Look at, at, at this guy called Joseph. Mm -hmm. He was a teenager when he was being sold mm -hmm. by his brothers. Mm -hmm. But even when he went far away, off in another country, mm. you know, to stay in abroad, yeah. and there was this temptation of sex. Mm. He never said, I can't do this because I fear my mother and my father. Yeah. They weren't there. Mm. But he said something, mm. that I can do such a thing. In other words, I cannot commit fornication. Mm. I can't for commit adultery, mm -hmm. and I can't have sex mm. and sin against my God. My do God. you have a God as a teenager? Mm. If you're listening there and you're a son and your daughter, do you have a God that you, you fear mm. To use those organs mm -hmm. outside his will mm -hmm. and so uh, I think one of the things that uh, Saranu had said is that we must make sure that we establish our children on the truth mm -hmm. and the truth is God's word mm -hmm. because when you start having sex mm -hmm. you can be sure one of the things that you are going to you are going to shorten your life mm -hmm. and we have said and we are gonna repeat it again mm -hmm. nobody in this world mm -hmm. has ever died because of lack of sex mm -hmm. but we have Billions of people who have died because of sex. Yeah. You get that? Yeah. Nobody has ever died because of lack of beer, mm -hmm. because of lack of drugs. Sure. Hakuna. Mm -hmm. But we have so many millions mm -hmm. of people, young, old, mm -hmm. who have died, who are dying, and who are going to die yeah. because of the consequences of sex, yeah. beer, and drugs. Mm -hmm. Our youth, you have to be responsible. Yeah. Responsibility means responding to your God-given ability. Amen. You have the ability to wow. say no. Mm -hmm. 
to beer because nobody can force you to drink beer. Mm. You have the ability to say no mm. because nobody can force you to take drugs. Mm. You have the ability to say no to sex mm. because nobody can can have sex with you mm. and unless really you are in a place where you can be raped or sodomized. Mm. You get that? Nobody can force you to go for a bash. Mm. Nobody can force you to go for these parties. Mm. And especially during during uh, you know uh, Christmas mm. holidays, yeah. there's a lot of sex orgies. There's a yeah. lot of sexual immorality that mm. goes on. Mm. People get sexually transmitted diseases, exactly. sexually transmitted demons. Mm. You get that? Mm. And your life is messed completely because of only one day stand. Mm. It is important for you to know that every decision you make mm. concerning sex, mm. drugs, wow. and beer mm. determines. Your how it is gonna be in your future mm -hmm. wow. that's very powerful ma 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 mom you've reminded me something yes mm -hmm. very pertinent thing wow. mm -hmm. there was a day we were coming from the show one of the days yes mm -hmm. and we boarded uh do we call it a mat or, or a, a bus mm -hmm. yes we were going home with my husband then in the vehicle i happened to there was some music the music was literally glorifying alcohol something I don't remember the words. And sex. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God, our children were asleep. I was like, God help my children. It was just mm -hmm. insane. And then I was like, is this what our youths are exposed to? Mm -hmm. And consuming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what am I trying to explain? I'm trying to say that the fu your future is entirely your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because the energy you take in. Life is more of energy. Uh, to, to yeah, because you can say you're wasting it today to punish your dad or your mom for doing something. Mm. But in future, you will have to... Yani you, will, you will do this at, at the cost of your future, mm. your children, mm. or your marriage. You will be married a very traumatized person. Mm. And then, life is more than sherehe, kupiga sherehe, yeah. kupiga maji. They call it kupiga maji. Yeah. And they were dancing with some funny, funny tumblers. You see, the, 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 the kind of energy these Wasanis are creating, there are people who have given up. Mm -hmm. They have no morals, they have no purpose. It is true. Yeah. And life without a source, whether you will call God the source power or whatever you will call it, every person has something they are submitted to. Mm -hmm. So if you can't submit, God will be getting submitted to something that is addictive and very toxic. Mm -hmm. Allow me to add something. Yes. Two things, one to parents, another one for the youths. Mm -hmm. I'll use examples for yes. youths. Number one, parents, I think this thing we cannot do it when they are already big. As the two of you are saying, yeah. yes. we have to begin from down. Yes. Because if I did not give you the word of God at that younger age, mm -hmm. I can't introduce when you are already a youth mm -hmm. or you thought a teenager. Mm -hmm. You are going to church alone, or you are never going to church. Yeah. And then now you are telling the Mwanza Kwenda Kansan or Kiwa youths, it's very almost impossible mm -hmm. for them to do that. Mm -hmm. Also, bring the word of God mm -hmm. in their children that are still very young. I can say that I was never raised by a father who was there. Mm. My father left my life when I think I was 12. Yes. But the, for the few years that you are with him, he will come home drunk, mm. telling me, Umesuma Bible, bring the Bible. And I won't even read. And I say, Anza, read. John is very good. Answer na John. He's drunk. He's smelling alcohol. Answer Busoma. What is this? And I say, Yes. Read, read. So every day you come and tell me, Umesoma nelo gani? No, I'm being Umesoma John. So I'll read and write, write it down. Today I read John. And Matthew and this one. So, mm -hmm. umesome, yili sema nini? Mwambi yesu wali sema alienda kwa, kwa mtoni, akapata watu wanavua samaki. So, he began telling me, although even though he akwa, naenda kanisani sana sana, mm -hmm. but he began telling me. So, with the time, mm -hmm. I've, I've grown on my own, bila mzazi, bila mm -hmm. So, I can say, it was that word that preserved mm -hmm. me. And then to the youths, if you do not have God in you, because you'll find that maybe you're just doing well in your life. Mm. Like when I was in high school, I was in Form 2, there was a guy who was in Form 4. Mm. This guy was smart. Mm -hmm. He would get A in everything. So, everyone we used to go to church and then we would sit uh, on Wednesday services, Salafu, Tunakana, Pastor Naubiri. This guy will come with his physics books and then sit facing this side. Mm. So, Anapatia, Pastor, back. Anasama Munona Ujama. Why and was he doing that? He was so rude, so <laughs> arrogant, but very smart right. upstairs, yes. Mm. And I said, I'm going to ask you a question about physics. 
This pastor is here because he failed in life. Mm -hmm. So jobs like being a pastor, being whatever, is just because you failed in life. Mm -hmm. So this guy, there's nothing he can do. And then he'll come and tell us, come as you win and lay. He'll just say, hey, Gojani Kidogo, I have something for you guys. In mm -hmm. see you meeting. Uh, where's your chairman? Uh, can you go to the notice board? You are just you seeing Mungu Mungu. Look at the notice board. You see chairman is Hapochini. The CU treasurer, one of our two, CU secretary, all of them Namasina Madi. I never come to church, I never go to church, but go to the notice board. The worst I got was uh, was math with I think was 82. That was my lowest. So by that you can assemble this guy doesn't go to church. He doesn't worship God. And he's he doing so well. Mm. Yes. He looks very prosperous. Mm. And also when exams comes, he just walks in school with A's everywhere. This guy finished very well, got an A, went to university. And then he only went there the first semester he was found selling drugs. He was expelled from the university. Mm -hmm. Right now, he has been operating as a matatu a matatu nitauta manini. Kakamega kisumurut. Since I was in high school. He was there, but then I was informed he was there until I left Kakamega has been in those routes. Mm. Uh, wow. wow. With that strength, mm. with that smartness in his head. Mm. So, I think what you are saying is so amazing that even our youths today, they have role models mm. who look perfect, yes. look drinking and doing well mm. until mm. they go deep into their lives. Yes. Eh? So, yeah, that, that's very true. They think that as long as this guy is doing well, mm. He's just fine. But also, you see, God forgave him because God can still punish you. And I now, you go, you finish your degree, you get a first class, you get a sponsorship, you go and do your master's, you do a PhD, and go and now after finish your PhD, God says, full stop. Now continue from there. So you'll find you are having, and we've seen that, that those stories in newspapers. Someone saying that I, did, I finished my PhD in 1992, I'm living in shacks, no life, no wife, no family, no job with my papers. Why? Look at these people. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord was never introduced in them. Mm -hmm. They never had God. They were always, they, they always said that, uh, uh, be strong in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then they're always strong in themselves. Mm -hmm. So the part of the Lord was never there. Mm -hmm. Then case number two also, also in high school, there was also a guy who was also very smart. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was ahead of us and I was, his, I was a classmate with his younger brother. So we used to look at this guy, he's always very sharp, very smart. Then, when we finished Form 4, we finished, when we were in Form 1, he was in Form 4. So when we finished Form 4, he should have now been maybe graduated already. Mm -hmm. So when we were coming to pick our results, I met the brother and come and say, Hey, brother, how is your bro? Mm -hmm. Hey, brother, I don't even talk about him. What happened? At he, he was to graduate this last December, but he we went to pick his degree. I got HIV cure first year. So he died, I think, after fourth year, he just died. So we picked his degree. So imagine that short life. Why? Because we think that at Wanasema, uh, Ujana, to enjoy because it's short season. But there are always consequences. Mm. 